welcome to special dialogue with me, Vandana Nanwani. Today we hear more success stories than ever before of Indonesians making it big outside the homeland. From humble origins, they seized opportunities turning themselves into business tycoons. With the Fort Diaspora Congress held this year, it goes to show the increased acknowledgement for locals abroad. This is what we will focus on in today's special dialogue. We start with Marvel Technology, a producer of storage communications and semiconductor products founded 22 years ago in the United States. So I talked to co-founder Sehat Sutarja on the beginnings of Marvel and the challenges he faced. I have been working on electronics since I was 12 years old. And all these years, all that, those years, I wanted to uh, go to the US okay. to study electronics okay. after I finished my high school. Get my bachelor degree and then my um, master degree and I got my PhDs in, in electronic circuit design. Okay. And by that time, okay, the, the world has moved from uh, analog to digital. Mm -hmm. That was the, the beginning of the digital revolutions. In the early 80s, computers, PCs, were just be, was being introduced into the masses. So you were there to kind of witness the transition. Right, but I was studying analog. Oh. Right, I was building radios, yeah. I was building amplifiers. Yeah. I, was, I went to school to do analog designs. So I worked in the analog field for a, a, a year and a half after I graduated. And when I saw this, okay, the world moving to digital, I ran away from analog. I went to work for digital. I went, for, I went to work for a small startup company okay. in Santa Clara yeah. doing digital design, and I had no idea how to do digital design. Okay. I have no clue, and but I still took it. Yeah. I, I felt like, hey, how hard could it be? Yeah. So no, that's, I worked there for five years. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then I realized the world still analog. Uh. Yes. The world is moving to digital, yeah. but the analog world is not going to move to digital. We still hum with the real world still have to deal with the analog world, yeah. but we need to figure a way how to ways to inter how to deal with the analog world mm -hmm. to convert to the digital world. So that's how uh, okay we Got came up with the idea, idea how to build electronic oh. products that basically bridge the, this analog world to the digital world called digital signal processing with combining analog circuits into the same integrated circuits. Okay. That's, that's the, the, the original the idea. Original, okay. So uh, Marvel uh, focuses on designing the chips, but the manufacturing is in other countries such as China, Taiwan. So in the mid-90s when you developed it, you know, what were the challenges that you faced? Of course, today it's a normal practice where it's designed somewhere else and it's manufactured somewhere else. But when you built it in the, in the mid-90s, what were the challenges that you faced? There are different types of challenges in designing electronic uh, circuits. Uh, there are the detailed challenges on how to build things, higher performance, lower costs, and lower power. But those are like these typical goals that moving goals, moving objectives that you have that to meet. That everyone has to face through. Yeah, everybody, yeah. every, com every companies that want to be in this business mm. always have to meet the, those challenges. Mm. And those challenges are just means, just means you have to work. Uh, nothing special about it. Yeah. So Marvel has offices in Singapore and China and India, but what about Indonesia? Why didn't Marvel want to start an office? We have branches around the world. Yeah. And I always wanted to have a branch in Indonesia. Yeah. But the new management decided that Indonesia is not a good place for, for, for them to be, to be operating. So it's a sad part. Okay? My heart feels like... But that goes on to my next question that, you know, if Indonesia is an upcoming country and the technology industry here is upcoming, why, why not Indonesia? And what do you I think always about ask, I always ask that question. Yeah. Why is it that there's only few countries in the world where people, they're, where their critical mass or, um, masses of building uh, electronic chips. Yeah. If you look at the, the critical masses okay, in, the, in Silicon yeah. Valley, you have critical masses in Taiwan, and then in the last 10 years, there were some, big, some critical masses in China, in, in Shanghai and Beijing. 
but those are only in the last 10 years or so. And if you look at, well, in Japan, there are also some, but even look in other parts of the world, there are no critical masses at all, whatsoever. So what about the technology world in Indonesia? Do you think it still needs to catch up with the rest of the world or you know, the challenges that it's facing today? In about five years from now or so, we cannot make chips smaller, or at least you cannot make it smaller and cheaper at the same time, no longer. So in the next few years, we can still make things cheaper, smaller, and lower power. But after that, if you make smaller, yes, theoretically still can, it's possible to make smaller, but won't be cheaper. And the problem is the challenges, the complexity to build these products increasing at exponential rate. So to build a factory costs, used to cost like a few hundred million dollars like 20 years ago, now is like $10 billion. It's massive. So, and to design so complicated products, su such complicated products in one device requires hundreds of engineers. You cannot start a small company and then say oh, you only have like a few people to work. I also want to ask you on the role of low cost computing in um, developing countries and how to make technology more affordable to masses. We have not changed the way we build computers in the last 30 years, 40 years, sadly. So everything that we've built basically is the same as 40, 30, 40 years ago, just bigger and more complex. Now, we, okay, if we can solve this problem, and I think we could solve this problem, I published a paper on this, yeah. down the road, we can build computers to be cheaper, lower power, better performance, and that will help the rest of the world yeah. to have access the same and more affordable yeah the same technology that used to have used people they have the, the people they have the money yeah. to, to uh, people the, the have the have country the industrial worlds yeah. to have access to this technology yeah it can but touch many more people yeah, i think so, i think eventually even people in the remote villages yeah. will have access to this technology yeah. I, i've been working in electronics for all my life and I found out that the biggest challenge, you were asking about challenges before, the biggest challenge actually is to, cha to change people's mind. That's true, the mentality yeah. of the people. How to do things differently. Yes. That's the biggest. That's so for, for my last question, what are the tips that you can give for uh, upcoming tech people, tech Indonesians who kind of want to go abroad or start their own tech companies here? What are the, briefly, just what advices would you? What I found out over the years, working on, on technology, uh, have success and failures, and maybe in bit and in bit and things in between. Whenever I uh, uh, why, why we have success, more likely is because we try to change the world. When whenever we fail or don't succeed as well, is because we just want to be equal to the other people. I can only say that. At least from my experience, if you want to succeed, try aim high. Okay. Aim high, you might not get there, yeah. but for sure, you're not going, if you aim low, you're not going to get high. Although Marvel was originally founded by Sehat alongside his wife and brother, following their resignation in 2010, they are no longer CEO, but Sehat still remains chairman. Throughout the years, Marvel has diversified its products, attracting more suitors when it went public in the year 2000. When we return, we check out American furniture manufacturing company that gets its products from Indonesia but manufactures in the United States. That's next.